Here's today's breaking news on SpaceX and Elon Musk. Passenger shot SpaceX rocket launch from a plane window. Everyone wants a window seat on a plane, unless they are afraid of flying. Looking out an aeroplane window is often an awe-inspiring, breathtaking reminder of the vastness of the Earth. You can gaze out the window at the vast sky and get a bird's eye view of the Earth, but for one flight's passengers, this window seat experience went above and beyond the usual breathtaking views. According to the Daily Star, passengers on a United Airlines flight over Cape Canaveral, Florida, were taken aback when they saw a rocket launch on the ground below. The video of the SpaceX Falcon 9 leaving Earth was captured by a user and quickly went viral on social media platforms. The breathtaking scene was captured from the air over NASA's Kennedy Space Center and posted by the user. According to News Corp Australia, the Dragon C211, SpaceX's newest cargo Dragon 2 spacecraft, was launched atop a Falcon 9 rocket on Saturday, November 26. The spacecraft was sent to the International Space Station to resupply the Expedition 68 crew. Falcon 9 is a reusable, two-stage rocket designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond, according to the SpaceX website. Falcon 9 is the world's first reusable orbital rocket. Reusability enables SpaceX to reuse the most expensive parts of the rocket, lowering the cost of access to space. In other news, SpaceX wants to add more powerful satellites to Gen 1 Starlink constellation. The first-generation Starlink satellite constellation is preparing for a hardware update that will enhance its capabilities. Telecommunications attorney Ryan Tomsborn discovered that on Wednesday, SpaceX discussed integrating new satellite technology into the current Starlink network in an FCC application. The business stated in the application that this improved gear will allow SpaceX to more efficiently meet the demand for its groundbreaking broadband capabilities opens in a new window. Two months have passed since SpaceX received conditional authorization to launch a second-generation Starlink system into Earth's orbit. The business was given permission by the FCC to use 7,500 second-generation satellites. Currently, SpaceX plans to upgrade the first-generation system, which is allowed to support a total of 4,408 satellites, by integrating the second-generation technology. To be clear, while SpaceX intends to populate its General 1 constellation with upgraded satellites, it does not intend to more rapidly de-orbit its existing satellites. The company wrote. Rather, it seeks only to replace those satellites with upgraded hardware when those satellites reach the end of their planned operational period. The application from SpaceX doesn't go into great detail about the enhanced satellite hardware. To improve internet coverage for U.S. consumers, it does, however, mention new gear with far more powerful beam forming and digital processing capabilities. The use of these narrow beams will augment SpaceX's capability to expand fast, low-latency broadband service throughout the United States and will allow for a high degree of frequency reuse. Thus, with these new capabilities, consumers can expect more connectivity from the same radio frequency resources, the company added. The improved satellites will be compatible with first-generation Starlink consumer terminals and will also occupy the same orbits, altitudes, and inclinations. But, the company stated in its request for FCC approval that the new hardware will change some of the license parameters specifically mentioned in SpaceX's past authorization. The decision to update the older Starlink network could aid the corporation in resolving the satellite internet network's congestion issues. For many U.S. users last year, Starlink's broadband quality and speeds declined. The system's capacity is being strained since SpaceX possibly oversold access to the satellite internet infrastructure. As a result, SpaceX has reduced the Starlink stated speeds and is getting ready to implement a high-speed data cap for subscribers later this year.
but the corporation intends to increase the broadband quality in the long run by placing thousands more Starlink satellites into Earth's orbit. Just roughly 3,600 satellites are currently in operation for Starlink by SpaceX, the majority of which are from the first-generation constellation. In breaking news, Starship, Elon Musk SpaceX prepares to launch the most powerful rocket system ever built. Elon Musk is renowned for having unbridled desire and appearing to defy any restrictions placed in his path. Space is no different. The millionaire has high goals, he wants to launch the biggest, most potent rocket in the world and use it to send people to Mars and the Moon. After over 10 years of development, Musk announced SpaceX is ready to attempt the maiden flight of its Starship Mega Rocket in March. If Starship is successful, I have little doubt that it's going to be the workhorse that will bring humans back to the Moon and Mars. Olivier de Weck, professor of aeronautics, astronautics, and engineering at MIT, told Insider. It's not just a cool rocket project, but literally it has the potential to change the fate of humanity, he said. Before Starship's initial launch attempt, you should be aware of the following 14 facts. At the height of about 390 feet, Starship dwarfs other rockets. The rocket is taller than any other active heavy lift launcher at 394 feet. It stands nearly 30 feet taller than the SLS Mega Rocket that NASA launched on its Artemis I mission to orbit the Moon. Dweck noted that it takes considerable engineering skill to create a rocket of this magnitude. A rocket that's twice as big is about eight times as challenging to build and test and fly than rocket half its size, he said. It's not only the tallest rocket ever created, but also the most powerful. Starship, according to SpaceX, will be the most powerful rocket ever built. Starship is technically the name of the spacecraft that sits on top of the rocket. The rocket's bottom section is a super heavy booster that packs a powerful punch. The rocket generates approximately 17 million pounds of thrust thanks to this booster. That's more than twice the thrust of NASA's SLS Mega Rocket Booster, which has 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. According to the SpaceX website, the rocket should be able to lift up to 250 metric tons of payload into orbit, or 150 metric tons if used in its reusable form. The Starship is also designed to be reusable. The Starship is designed to be reusable, which means it should be able to return to Earth intact and ready to be used again. Musk believes that reusable rockets are the future of space travel, allowing companies to save money and time with each launch. SpaceX successfully landed a reusable prototype of Starship in 2021. SpaceX made a breakthrough in 2021 when it successfully landed its fifth Starship prototype, dubbed SN15. The unmanned vehicle flew about 10 kilometers into the sky before returning to Earth and landing safely on a landing pad six minutes later. One of the previous prototypes had landed successfully before, but blew up spectacularly just 10 minutes later. The spacecraft isn't the only part of the rocket that can be reused. SpaceX also hopes that the booster will land safely and be reused. The rocket's incredible thrust is due to its Raptor engines, which are a trademark of the company. The massive thrust of the Starship is provided by SpaceX's Raptor engine.
Each of the 10-foot-tall engines produces approximately 500,000 pounds of thrust. These engines propel themselves forward by burning methyl ox, a mixture of methane and oxygen. This is a very different type of fuel than SpaceX's other rockets, which run on a mix of kerosene and oxygen, or NASA's SLS rocket, which runs on oxygen and hydrogen. That is not a propellant combination with which we have a lot of experience, Dweck said. He went on to say that there are two benefits to using this fuel. Methane contains far less carbon than kerosene as a molecule, one carbon atom for methane versus 10 to 16 for kerosene. In practice, this means that burning methane produces far less soot than kerosene, which is advantageous for reusing an engine. Another advantage is that it's simple to imagine producing methane on Mars to refuel the rocket. You need CO2, which is available from Mars' atmosphere, water, which exists on Mars in the form of subsurface ice deposits, and energy, so of course you need a chemical plant, Dweck explained. Starship makes clever use of stainless steel, a metal long considered to be too heavy. In contrast to other rockets, which are typically made of aluminium, the Starship's body is mostly made of stainless steel. Using stainless steel may appear counterintuitive, after all, it is a heavy metal, roughly three times the density of aluminium. However, there are a few reasons why steel was the best option. The first was the cost, wholesale steel is significantly less expensive than aluminium. The second characteristic is power. Steel is much, much stronger than aluminium, Dweck explained, so the parts can be much thinner than with aluminium. Finally, the parts become lighter. The third factor is corrosion. Because these rockets are designed to be reusable, they must be durable. Steel is far superior in this regard. Each booster contains 33 Raptor engines, so a lot can go wrong when you try to fire them. That's the big challenge is getting all these 33 engines to light simultaneously. Even if each engine has a 99% probability of working properly, the probability that all 33 will fire at the right time and it is not that high, said Dweck. SpaceX successfully tested a booster in February. On Thursday, Elon Musk conducted a static fire test of the Super Heavy booster. 31 of the 33 Raptor engines fired for the brief test, which Musk deemed a success. Team turned off one engine just before start and one stopped itself, so 31 engines fired overall. But still enough engines to reach orbit, he said in a tweet. NASA has teamed up with SpaceX to use Starship in future crewed missions. In 2021, NASA awarded SpaceX a $3 billion contract to develop a commercial launcher capable of carrying humans into space. NASA anticipates using the launcher on two upcoming Artemis missions to the Moon. SpaceX has also scheduled civilian crewed Starship missions. It is scheduled to transport Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa and an eight-person team of his choosing. Maezawa recently revealed the members of his crew. Artists, content creators, athletes, AK pop star, and a DJ are among those featured. 
MISAWA's mission, dubbed Dear Moon, will take him and his crew to within 200 km of the Moon's surface. Maizawa stated in 2020, a year before launching an open competition for the Moon mission, that he was looking for a romantic, female partner, to accompany him to the Moon. He later called the search off. One day, the rocket could be used to travel around the world in 30 minutes. Musk also plans for Starship to be used for Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport. With Starship and Super Heavy, most international long-distance trips would be completed in 30 minutes or less, says the SpaceX website. Dweck said it sounds probably doable, but maybe not so good for the environment. Last year, Dweck published a paper about the growing risk of the space industry emitting more greenhouse gases. The fuel in the Starship is methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas, much more potent than CO2 if not burned up before being released into the atmosphere. Musk wants Starship to take the first colonists to Mars. Musk wants to visit more than just the Moon in our solar system. On this launcher, SpaceX hopes to transport humans all the way to Mars. I must admit to being congenitally optimistic, SpaceX and Tesla wouldn't exist otherwise, but I think 5 years is possible and 10 years is highly likely, he said. There is a 60-70% to 70 chance the launch could go forward, one expert said. SpaceX has made significant progress since it began developing Starship, according to Dweck. Even so, a lot can go wrong before the launch. Will it happen in March? I'm more optimistic about it than I was last July, but I still wouldn't give it more than a 60 or 70 percent probability, he said. Still, he called for people not to jump to conclusions too quickly. If this launch goes badly if there's an explosion or the booster doesn't return and is not recovered, let's all have patience. Let's keep in mind that this is just one test out of hundreds. And if anything, SpaceX has shown us that they learn a lot from failures, he said. Subscribe for your SpaceX Daily Fix.